I've had this video, this unfinished video, sitting on my computer. It was called Toontown Community Clash, a review and rant of Corporate Clash, and contained my complaints about a game and its impact on the community it resides in. However, the video sat unfinished for around, um several months. The rant I planned has pretty much become irrelevant since no one really cares about Toontown Corporate Clash anymore, but I'd still like to release the video as a reminder to all communities that you need to create a game first and a community reaction second. This video is simply going to be the review portion of that video consisting of my experiences playing Toontown Corporate Clash. And at the end of the review, I'm going to give a simple gist of what I intended on saying in the rant portion of the video. Keep in mind, the review portion was recorded five months ago while congested, so I'm going to sound dumb. With all that being said, let us begin. Many non-Toontown people may be asking, what's Corporate Clash and who cares? It looks like a breath of fresh air for the entire Toontown experience, and it's exactly what the community needs. Well... No. Corporate Clash is literally a revived Project Altus, but rebranded and redesigned. Featuring gameplay changes in regards to progression and gag balancing, new graphics, new music, and new playgrounds, it looks to be any Toontown fanboy's dream. Except, this project seems to be going more for quantity instead of quality. At the time of Corporate Clash's release, there wasn't much in regards to new Toontown content. Toontown Rewritten basically had nothing that other projects hadn't done before Toonfest 2018. Toontown Offline was very secretive about the large, heavily awaited Operation Duck Hunt, now known as Operation Search Out Scrooge, and everyone overlooked Operation Dessert Storm and its new additions. Everyone at that time, and admittedly still do, just see any content, bad or good, as new content that will revive the game. This is what Corporate Clash takes advantage of. So first and foremost, we need to look at the presentation, since that is obviously what stands out the most. Everything about it is a mixed bag, and by that I don't mean there are mixed opinions on the presentation, although that is true. I mean, the whole thing is a mishmash of different textures and art styles. There are some Disney assets, some new assets, some traced over assets, some Microsoft Word assets, and some mixed assets. Look at this building. Why does it have Disney textures and trace textures? It looks bad. I have a theory about why this may be the way it is. Corporate Clash MPO has a huge creative team with conflicting art styles. There's a chance that one of them will get very upset if someone else makes a better Toontown Central tile texture that replaces theirs. So, rather than having a plethora of quality textures, they maintain bad textures just to keep their creative team generally happy. This happened on Sprite Edgy's, now called Primus, Underfell fan game in the music department, which created internal drama and caused the game to suffer a bit. It's either that theory, or they're just lazy. Most people tend to look at the new Toon head models when they think of Corporate Clash's presentation, since you obviously spend the most time looking at your Toon. I personally think that they're somewhat odd. I like the new dog, and I kind of like the horse, but the other heads are bad. The mouse has a weak chin, the rabbit is just ruined for me, and the other species look like bad remakes. The monkey doesn't look too bad compared to, say, the bear. The new species are debatable too. The deer and croc models are rip-offs of Rewritten's designs, although the croc does have more teeth than TTR's. The fox model is fine. The raccoon could be better, especially on head variety. The bat's design is bad, and I hate it with a passion. And poor, poor beaver. Whoever modeled its head must have hated the species. It even looks depressed to exist. I like what they did with some of the animations, though there are definitely some unwelcome additions. I appreciate the little animations given to the laugh meter, the tune tasks when holding the end key, and all that sort of stuff. 
I also really like how they fixed up some quirks with some of the original Disney stuff, like spacing out throw sound effects rather than playing all of them at the same time. What I don't like is the unique cutscenes for different shopkeepers. You would expect to be able to spam click through shopkeepers dialogue and just get to their tune task, but instead you have to watch them do a generic emote animation and then crack a stupid pun or joke related to their character or building service. I suppose that it makes them look less like generic NBCs and more like fleshed out characters, but it just looks cringy and takes up more time than it should, which I'll touch more upon when I talk about the gameplay. I really like how their new Acorn Acres looks. It's very lively. The Acorn Acres streets are fine, though the broken viz groups kind of break the aesthetic. The Eld Toontown, however, is kind of garbage. It's a nice medieval area, but what Corporate Clash NPO did to it was add a horrible black and white grainy filter when you're in the area. It looks really fantastic in color and seems almost reminiscent to Wizard 101. Why would they just ditch it for such a bad filter? If they had a filter that's similar to old colored cartoons, that would probably look pretty cool. But they decided to make it dull monochrome. It doesn't even help you. If anything, it hinders you. I think I almost ran into a level 6 cog because the filter kind of just blends everything together. I have a personal grudge with the soundtrack. Most of the songs on the soundtrack are filled with mediocre and or inappropriate remixes of their original songs. Big offenders include However, most of the tracks drove me to mute the game's music. Sorry, Mr. Fresca. It's nothing personal. Also, sorry if I butchered your name. Really, Corporate Clash's presentation is meh best. Let's talk about the plot and story for a bit. The basic synopsis is the same as Toontown Online, which is cogs are invading Toontown to turn it into some kind of corporate town. Toons fight back with gags. What's different? What's different? is how they've changed it, and it's really for the worst. After making your tune, you aren't brought to a tutorial as a new citizen of Toontown, fully knowing that you have the ability to either fight cogs or live peacefully. Instead, your tune is a tourist on vacation, visiting Toontown. Flippy, after redirecting you to Professor Pete to get what may appear to be useless things, tells you that your trip to Toontown is a one-way stop until the chairman is defeated, implying that you are forbidden to leave Toontown, thus trapped and forced to fight the cogs. This, contrary to Toontown Online, makes Flippy and the Toon Council look like tyrants that are more focused on war rather than the happiness of their citizens. I also didn't get far enough into the game to see any sort of arc occur, if there is any. So really, the story is kind of garbage with really no context other than what we've seen from Toontown outside of Corporate Clash. Now we shift from what we're looking at and reading and move on to the gameplay, which is what defines a video game. At least that has to be good, right? N not really? The game's main mechanics are there, with being able to run and jump outside of battle, and using gags in a turn-based fashion in battle. However, there are some key differences that set it apart from the other Toontown games. There's most obviously a new gag track called Zap which works with Squirt to do optimum damage. It seems to be a more convenient version of Trap and Lore. However, after soloing throughout my whole playthrough, I never saw Zap used. The Zap gags aren't exactly very creative. In fact, most of the new gags aren't creative. Corporate Clash's gag tracks now span to level 8, which means there's at least one new gag for every gag track. Tune Up gets a treasure chest for level 7, which I don't know what it 
does to heal so much laugh. Trap gets both Springboard for level 3 and Wrecking Ball for level 7, with Railroad nowhere to be found. The Wrecking Ball doesn't make too much sense, and the lack of Railroad means that Trap has no gags that affect all the cogs. Lore has an obligatory $50 bill for level 7. Sound has a terrible addition, which is the Kazoo gag for level 3. Alright, alright everyone. Tell me this. How in the world is a kazoo more obnoxious and louder than a whistle? Kazoo could have easily been a new level 1 sound, but no way is anyone gonna tell me that the kazoo can break my eardrums more than a bike horn. Squirt practically has a throw gag for level 4, and Throw has an obligatory birthday cake slice for level 4. Drop has two new gags, Bowling Ball and Boulder. Boulder is actually kind of funny, but that also means the legendary Teutonic is not a gag, making the two most powerful gag tracks the only ones without gags that affect all cogs. I don't know if Zap has any gags that affect all cogs. Now that we've gone over the gags, let's move on to game progression. Tune tasks no longer reward you with a static reward. Every tune task gives you both a set number of experience points and jelly beans. Yes. In this game, you level up. At the beginning of the game, you get an experiometer which tracks your level and shows how much experience points you have. When you level up, you always earn another laugh point. Sometimes you will earn a training point, which you can use to unlock new gag tracks, or prestige slash upgrade existing gag tracks. Apparently, every 5 levels, your jelly bean capacity increases by 500, and every 10 levels, your gag pouch increases by 10. You earn experience points by defeating cogs, unlocking achievements, and doing tune tasks. While it does offer a new sense of pace, it isn't exactly engaging. You aren't told how much experience points you earn when you finish a cog battle, and you only really know when you level up when a jingle plays. You're given four tune task slots right off the bat, but as far as I'm aware, only one can be used for mainline tasks. The other three are reserved for side tasks. This is actually really unhelpful because it doesn't allow you to speed up and take on multiple required tasks at the same time. Also, there's inherently an issue with offering jelly beans every time you finish a tune task. It pretty much puts focus on the task line and the task line alone, and shoves money-making distractions aside so that way you can focus on the task line. Not everyone wants to play the game for the task line. For some people, they like golfing more than leveling. Trying to make people grind the task line and throw out anything that distracts from the task line makes the game more monotonous and boring than it really should be. Now let's move on to the task line itself. It's so long. Ridiculously long, actually. I played the game for a total of 5 hours and 29 minutes, and I'm still in Toontown Central. It really should only last 1 to 3 hours, depending on if you're grinding your gags or not. However, I wasn't grinding gags. I might have been exploring the world for around 30 minutes to an hour, but other than that, I was doing the task line. There really wasn't much sense of progression other than leveling gags, which I got throw and sound up to level 3, and obtained a tune-up before stopping entirely. The tasks themselves consist of what I like to call delivery boy tune tasks. These tasks are long, tedious, and can consist of some unspecified RNG. Any sort of unnecessary animations that the shopkeepers give don't help with their length either, and neither does the dialogue. If you're at all interested with the stories associated with Toon Tasks, be prepared to read a whole lot of text, some of which is probably three times the limit of Speed Chat Plus. Sometimes, you'll be able to get an item from a shopkeeper without having to fight cogs, but that happened once just to plug Loopy Goopy Google Nerd and his euphemistic building called Loopy's Balls. That's one reason why I wouldn't allow my nine-year-old sister to play Corporate Clash. Every massive multiplayer online game thrives from an active, large player base. Unfortunately, Corporate Clash suffers the same fate as something like Operation Desert Storm suffers from. No players. 
Sure, there's around 400 to 600 players online, but you can't find anyone without using social media outside of the game. Every single district has a relatively even number of players in them, so there isn't a single district that has a lot of players. So a lot of the time, you have to solo everything. That is really boring, and really defeats the purpose of having new gag functionality that requires cooperation. I've had multiple issues with connectivity when playing the game. I'd try to go into a tune building only to realize that server objects are either non-existent or non-functional. This poor connectivity is an infamous part of Corporate Clash's issues. Corporate Clash NPO, however, doesn't seem to see the value in debugging for possible server code that causes connection problems. They've appeared to have wasted a lot of money buying new server hardware instead of fixing possible code issues. I'm unsure if this is still true or not, but they also decided to run over 80 client agents on their servers. As some people have pointed out, it really only takes 5 to 6 client agents to handle about 2,000 players. And even after that, the staff insisted that it was necessary. So, if anyone associated with Corporate Clash NPO is watching, here's a recommendation from a programmer that has done Toontown server code. If you currently aren't doing this, make sure the Astron, Uberdog, and AI servers are generating logs. If a district resets, mayhaps you check out one of your districts to see if one of them has recently started making a new log. Or if authentication stops working and your players can't type chat, Maybe see if your Uberdog servers are doing okay. And if your server goes completely down, check all three. I'd say a good MMO is one that people can actually play. If there was one thing to take away from Corporate Clash, it's that it tries too much to pander to what the Toontown community wants from Toontown Rewritten. New content. The team behind Clash seems to not care about branching the game out to a wider audience, something that is the exact opposite of what Rewritten is doing. They're more interested in easily baiting people into their game through new, low-quality content, rather than making a game that is more than the Toontown community can enjoy. The content that they've made does not improve the game. It hinders it. I had more fun playing a demo of a Sonic 06 Unity remake. I rate Toontown Corporate Clash 2 out of 5. I would have given it a 1 out of 5 if I didn't take into consideration that I soloed the whole game. If anyone wants to see what all I experienced from Corporate Clash, feel free to read my day-by-day -day points document that I wrote while playing Clash, which is in the description. I was going to complain about the white knighting on both sides of the community, Clash bashing other projects for really no reason other than not being Corporate Clash, and everyone else hating on Clash for being garbage. I was going to cover Corporate Clash MPO itself, MPO meaning non-profit organization, as Corporate Clash is a non-profit organization. This launched my theories on them adding donations or even membership, but those haven't happened yet to my knowledge. Also, when Corporate Clash was still Project Altus, Debido, or Debido, whatever, sold Project Altus to current head of Clash, Nosy Liam, for 400 US dollars. Oh! <sighs> That's the end of the summary, but now to end things off. I do not think that Corporate Clash is a good game. It's serviceable at best, though it's really boring due to its prolonged and heavily focused task line and lack of players. However, people are still willing to defend this game to death because it's not Toontown rewritten, even given the mediocrity of the game and the shady nature of the staff. In the end, it shows how low people in the community will go to get something different. Hopefully, Operation SOS will bring quality back into the community, though I doubt the community will survive that long to see that light. I'm done talking. See ya.